Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Love that start, Mr. Larry Pesavento. He's off today, going to try and fill in the shoes of Larry. And uh, what do we got going on here, folks, jumping around? We have the S&Ps right now, minus 5 points at 3788. The NASDAQ, minus 20 points, trading at 12,871. The Dow off 11 points, trading at 30,962. And the Russell off 2 points right now, trading at 21. 23. Mr. Pesavento, he kicks it off with the DAX. We get the DAX right now flat overnight. We get the FTSE down uh, one tenth percent. CAC roll up about two tenths percent over in Asia overnight. You get the Nikkei up a full percent. Shanghai down about two tenths percent, uh, jumping back to our markets. Pretty tame action overnight. We see a little bit of a thrust to negative action. You pull up the S&Ps where we were as of yesterday. We'll zoom it in on just yesterday's action and today. We're looking at five minute charts. The ES S&P futures from about 11 a.m. from almost 38.05, the high of 38.03. You trade down a solid 30, 35 points to the lows we made just after noon of 37.68. And then just like that, I mean, we charged up almost 40 points from where we were at noon to where we were at about 8 or 9 last night. But just like that, we give it back. We're bouncing a bit off the lows. We're about 12 points off the lows that we had just about an hour ago at 8 a.m. Eastern time in the S&Ps. How about the Russell yesterday? 2132. You put the Russell on a daily. My goodness, talk about bouncing off of the channel line. You back up the Russell because this is not the all-time high. Remember, you got to back it all the way up to September of 2018. We are now far above that level, folks. That high that we had in the Russell was talking about a high of 1744. You're sitting at 2123. An ode to our man Bud Rolfs, the Tiger Trading Post, throwing it back to TFNN a uh, decade ago at this point. Remarkable. But man, you look at this Russell. You put it on a daily. You talk about the channel line, folks. We break above the channel. We come back down, we test that line to perfection, and the thing just bounces. 21.23, the Russell with some big-time strength there. Got to check in on Bitcoin. Boy, you put it on a daily and go back. Things look a little, little bit crazy, as they may. Let's zoom it in on the early action, uh, the most recent action. We'll take off the Fibonacci level. We're sitting about 34,575. Maybe we need a little bit of consolidation. It's a, quite a consolidation area. You're talking about the lows of almost 31,000. You're talking about the highs of about 37,000. Not too outlandish. When you go from 10,000 to 40,000, almost no time, we may chop around for a bit in Bitcoin. Crude almost made it to a 54 handle this morning, trading at 53.52 right now. Jumping over to natural gas. How about the moves in this contract? From Monday at 258 to Tuesday at almost 290. Overnight, we're back down to 272. You trade up just since 8 a.m. We were up at a price point of 282, now trading 275. Natural gas, trying to find out where supply equals demand. Gold contract, catching a little bit of a bid. These are 15-minute bars. Sunday, we make it to 1817. Yesterday's action coming into the opening bell, we're at about 1861, and we're coming right back up to that level, which is interesting. We were right up to that level overnight at about 9 p.m. Eastern time. You get the gold contract sitting at 1860 right now. Silver. At 25.57 in notes and bonds, a little bit of a reprieve from what we've been getting. You're looking at a yield right now, 1.12%. We were up as high as about 1.17 yesterday, so a little bit of a bounce off the lows. We were down to 136.01. We're currently up five, four points on the session, but you can see we've bounced now about 15 points from where we were almost 22 hours ago, we'll call it, 11 a.m. Eastern time yesterday. All things considered, though, pretty remarkable rising yields in the face of where we were, I mean, you put this thing on a daily, right? Talk about a decisive move for instance, since the Georgia elections. You basically move more than two full points from 138.06 down to almost 136 even. And we're currently trading at 136.16. But man, that is a decisive move on this chart on the 10-year. And we'll take that opportunity to jump over to... 
think I got a mortgage article up there. There we go. Mortgage refinance demand spikes 20% as borrowers, what are they doing? FOMO people, fear of missing out. Fear of missing out on record low rates. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of validity to that fear if you really are. I mean, will we see uh, a 10 year yield of half a percent again in the future? We could. Uh, is the risk reward appropriate to wait for that if you really planned on refinancing? The thing I don't get is if you were planning on refinancing, what were you waiting for? You know, that's it. But nonetheless, the moment it happens, people say, ah, I wish I had done it. You got refinance demand spiking 20%. The average contract interest rate for 30 year fixed rate mortgages increased to 2.88. From 2.86. I mean, that was a record. Mortgage applications to purchase a home, which are less sensitive, of course, rose 8% for the week, 10% higher than one year ago. That market just continues to uh, plow forward. So let's see what we got. Mortgage applications to refinance a home spiked 20% compared to the previous week. Okay. Um, highest level since last March, volume 93% higher than a year ago. Average contract rate. For a conforming loan, that's 510400 or less, talking about 2.88 versus 2.66, uh, 99 basis points higher than a year ago. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. How about this one? Just hitting the tape. So Intel, talk about a struggling company. They might be turning the corner. They're going to try at least with a new CEO, the VMware CEO, Pat Gelsinger. He is going to replace Bob Swan, who is stepping down February 15th. The market loving this news this morning, folks. Just hit the tape at about 9 a.m., and there you see the reaction. I mean, look at that. We're up like 12, what is that, $7 on a $53 stock. You're talking about... 13, 14% on a change in leadership, and you put this again on the daily. Now, it's not showing the pre-market action yet, but we're at $60 right now in this chart. We're back to the entire consolidation you had from April till basically July. Now, to remind you, July, that's basically when they came out with earnings, and I believe they basically ceded leadership to AMD. They talked about that they were having trouble with those chips. There was a delay yet again. AMD was already shipping the next generation of chips. And I mean, they get into it right here. During Swan's tenure, Intel suffered blows from competitors over the summer. It reported its latest generation chips would be delayed while AMDs were already shipping inside laptops. Apple announced in the fall it would use its own proprietary chips in Macs, breaking a 15-year relationship with Intel for its chips. Uh, and then, of course, you have Third point, a hedge fund run by Dan Loeb. He was talking about just in December, urging Intel's board to explore strategic alternatives that came after Intel lost market share. It was all on the table there. And you have the CEO eggs thing in February. And man, this stock, I mean, putting it on a one minute, folks, it's just not stopping. First minute, second minute, third minute, fourth minute, fifth minute. It just doesn't want to stop the market. Very encouraged by ditching the current CEO. And he was only in that position. I mean, check this out. You're talking about December of 2019, I think he was in there. Yeah, uh, excuse me, January of 2019. Yes, basically, la 2019, that's a very short tenure. But guess what? When the stock folks, um, let's put it on a three-year weekly. Yeah, not exactly. So when did he come in? December of 2019. There you are on the chart. He got one little glimpse of an acceleration higher. And since then, it's been negative action for that stock in a big way. But today might be turning the corner a little bit of hope in the world of intel shares all right folks we get the s p's climbing back a little bit 37.89 down four points right now stay tuned we'll be right back If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps minus four right now, catching a little bit of a bounce from where we were at 8 a.m. Coming into the opening bell in about 12 minutes from right now, 37.90 in the S&Ps. The lows in that market about 8 a.m. You're looking at about 37.76, so 15 points off the lows. Thing which we're looking a little bit more dicey. About an hour ago, we just saw the Nasdaq futures come into the positive. We'll call them flat right now at 12,890. So we talked about Intel. Intel in terms of moving in a dramatic fashion just going to check it out again because it is moving so quickly right now the market just loving this yeah almost made it up to 61 uh, on that news of a new CEO other companies out there with news this morning target and uh, pushes to 204 I mean check out this stock right you look at where we were pre COVID at about 117 ish in in February you trade down to 90 and we've uh, more than doubled that we just climbed above 200 pre-market on Target. Now, what's interesting here, Target, you look at the valuations of these companies, and of course, it's all tied to the business they're doing, but you're looking at Target right now of about a $100 billion market cap. I mean, I think Amazon's coming in at 16 times the size of Target. Rightfully so, many would say, when you look at the amount of businesses and the amount of profit and revenue that that company, um, let alone you know the growth that they're experiencing but it is interesting when you start looking at targets at 100 billion you take a look at walmart walmart you're at about 400 billion 421 billion as of the close yesterday you jump over to amazon shares and you're looking at amazon to the tune of 1.6 i think we're talking about on amazon 1.568 million uh billion to be exact 1.5 billion 1.6 billion somewhere in that area Jump over to Lowe's and Home Depot because some other retails, it's just interesting. Lowe's, only $124 billion. Home Depot, you're looking at about 200 and change, 299 so approaching $300 billion for Home Depot. Point being, man, these companies that are priced to the $1.6 trillion mark, you better be crushing it because when you tell me that you can either take Amazon. Now, Amazon with Amazon Web Servers, that whole deal, it's a different story. But when you start saying that I can have Walmart for $400 billion, Target for $100 billion, Home Depot for 300 billion, Lowe's for 100 billion, and I'm at like half of what I would spend for Amazon. <sighs> Things get a little frothy. Um, Target, point being, 
Target shares, they're talking about quite a holiday season. How about 17.2% comp sales over the holiday e-commerce period? Uh, a lot of that already priced into the equity, so you're not seeing a huge acceleration that you might expect. Some of these comp sales, when these companies were able to just do, do everything online, I mean, imagine, right? We just talked about Target. To put things in context, Target was trading negative on the news that there was going to be restrictions and a lockdown. Rightfully so, when the economy first started uh, shutting down and people were very uncertain of what the future was going to bring. But imagine that that led to a, a scenario in their business where they actually gained almost 20% comp sales during a one-year period. Now, what's interesting here is, I've said it many times, we're going to be facing personal... Uh, it's, I'll rephrase. The year of COVID is, is shaping our human tendencies, and many of them are going to be here to stay with us in some fashion. So you're seeing Target is already saying the pandemic may permanently change the cadence of the holiday shopping season, too. Shouldn't be too surprising. Target said its stores will be closed on Thanksgiving Day 2021. I mean, why pay people to be in the stores when you can just have computers taking all the orders that you want? A certain truth to that. Uh, despite having strong results during the peak shopping season, this is the part. What's going to happen when things get back to normal in the next three, six months? Target sales growth slowed slightly compared to the gains it logged in the fiscal third quarter. The deceleration underscores the challenge that Target will face, as will many other equities that have flourished during 2020 and coming into 2021. As more of Americans get vaccinated, the company will have to prove it can hold on to market share gains, even as consumers feel more comfortable making numerous trips to smaller stores or returning to malls. Uh, you figure that one out, folks, you'll make a boatload of money in the market. Walmart, what's interesting here is, now you see the run Target had, right? Target, much smaller company. I mean, Target was only at about 60 billion or so forth in the beginning of the year. Walmart has risen from pre-COVID levels of about 120. You see the volatility around the shutdowns. We've risen since then. This action here in September had to do with them announcing the Walmart Plus uh, plan to compete with Amazon Prime. $98 a year, free grocery deliveries. They come out yesterday. They're going to get into financial tech as well. If Walmart starts really competing with Amazon to the tune of fintech, to the tune of getting people paying $100 a year, and once you pay that $100 a year, folks, you're in the ecosystem. You're actually incentivized to only shop at Walmart because if you're paying $100 a year to lock in free delivery for groceries, why would you shop anywhere else when you've already paid for that service? Every time you place an order, you basically gain an advantage because you've already paid for that membership fee, kind of like an Amazon in the early days. Doesn't seem so as much anymore, but Amazon in the early days, you pay for Prime, you get free delivery, two-day delivery for the year. Well, you're incentivized to shop on Prime if you've already paid for delivery for the year. Same thing with Walmart. Uh, I imagine Walmart really has some room to the upside over the long haul, folks, because with the amount of reach they have to consumers as they start to expand in the area of Walmart Plus. I mean, remember, Walmart was going after TikTok here just to bring in their mentality of what they're thinking about. When you have a company like Walmart that is thinking about going into business with a social media site that is starting fintech sites that has, a, a you know, a revolving um cash, credit, whatever they want to do, and you're one quarter the size of Amazon, you might see those two merge. Amazon Web Services, what they have going on there, um, whether it's with Alexa, right? How how Amazon beats Siri in, in the race to have uh, a voice in your house. Jeff Bezos, a brilliant move, basically pushing out products that were $20 or $30 in the Echoes, as opposed to Apple, where the only way you can have a Siri product is with like a $1,000 iPhone. Big mistake there for Apple, allowing Amazon to basically lead that area in terms of having Alexa. Nonetheless, Walmart, not quite as high as you might imagine it could be. When you start out the year at about 120, you're sitting at 148. Meanwhile, they announce over the year that they're coming out to compete with Amazon Prime with Walmart Plus. They announce they're starting a fintech. They announce they might go after TikTok. Meanwhile, you have comp sales in companies like Target, Walmart grocery stores through the roofs at this time. I imagine Walmart has some upside and it might be worth more than $400 billion that it's pushing right now. Because, yeah, picking it up again, you're talking about a company that's worth, where are we? Ah, it's not even pushing it. Yeah, you're talking about $400 billion or so for Walmart.
All right, what else we got going on? That was Target. Some comp sales to the upside in a big way. Visa, they are abandoning talks of played, plaid, played, uh, after DOJ raises antitrust. So they were taking them over for $5.3 billion, quite a big one that gets canceled. Um, and this had to do with antitrust. Seems like they were going to have to fight it out for a while, and they decided not to go after that. So Visa announced a plan to acquire plaid for $5.3 billion, double the startup's last pri private valuation, uh, the company's API software, often referred to as the plumbing behind fintech companies, lets startups connect to users' bank accounts. The company said it integrates with more than 11,000 banks. Uh, DOJ saying maybe not the best thing if Visa starts to control everything going on with fintech companies. And so that one not going to happen. Probably a good thing for consumers and innovation in general. All right, folks, we got three minutes to go until the opening bell. Come on back. We'll see what we have opening. The S&P is creeping towards even prices as we wait for the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back in three minutes. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archive subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets opening up and we got the SP is ticking up even further. Right now, just off by one point at 3792, you get the NASDAQ 100 climbing into the positive on the opening bell. 12,903. The Dow barely in the negative by 20 points, and the Russell positive by one point right now. 2127. The Russell strong like bull, 
up five points away from the overnight all-time highs of 2132. Keeping an eye on that natural gas contract, the volatility persists, trading at 275 right now. Gold contract up ten dollars eighteen fifty four to kick things off. You got crude backing off a bit just even in the last about hour, and that may be. We'll jump over, folks. What we have going on? We got CPI data at eight thirty this morning. U.S. consumer prices increased in December with households paying more for gasoline. Was the big one there? Uh, U.S. consumer prices increased in December. Households paying more for gas, though underlying inflation remained tame as the economy battled COVID-19 pandemic. Labor Department said on Wednesday, consumer price index increased 0.4% last month, gaining after gaining 2.2% in November. In the 12 months through December, the CPI rose 1.4% after increasing 1.2%. Uh, markets were looking for about 0.4%. So pretty pretty much in line with what the market was looking for at about 8.30, but that's some of the reason that you're seeing what you saw in terms of the 8.30 action. Look at this market, folks. Can't hold a good market down. 37.96 as the S&Ps continue to climb on the opening bell this morning. Pretty interesting when you look at where we are, folks, in terms of what is going on today. You have the House voting to impeach President Trump. Republicans, some of them, look to be on board in the House. Uh, not sure how that plays out in the Senate. Senators, uh, to some degree, king that they will vote for that on the Republican side. You'll need about 16 or 17 Republicans to vote for it in the Senate for it to matter. Reports last night coming out that uh, McConnell is on board. That might change things, though. So we'll see how that shakes out. But nonetheless, remarkable when you see a market so high in face of what's going on in terms of impeachment proceedings. First time ever a president possibly being impeached for a second time. And then in light of that, I mean, you got to talk about the jobs economy, right, in terms of the number of unemployed, the number of COVID cases rising dramatically. Jumping back to the same sentiment, when you look at where we are, so it comes out yesterday that you have the Trump administration talking about that they will release recommendation that the states start immu immunizing all residents 65 and older, along with all of those between 16 and 64 with medical conditions to make them more vulnerable to serious disease. I imagine the mentality here is, and there are difficult decisions, folks. I said it at first when it happened in Florida. You know, the CDC at first had recommended that you first get everybody, whether it was healthcare workers and people in assisted living, some of the hardest hit areas. And then what you would do is you would start to get the frontline workers. Well, in Florida, they said, you know what, we're going to start with the older communities. It's tough decisions, folks. We just got to get it out. We got to get everybody vaccinated, period, anyway. Um, and it looks like they are making that change probably to do with you're seeing a slow roll out here. And they're saying, listen, we can't wait for healthcare workers and frontline workers to get vaccinated if that is going to take three to four months, which right now, I mean, we're, we're, I think, like four to six weeks into vaccinations. We already have people getting second doses. So they're opening it up. But we'll see. That number of people is 128 million Americans, folks. In Florida, I can tell you, I'm sure you've heard the reports, very difficult times in terms of people trying to get those shots Nonetheless, I imagine this will start getting better. We have about 10 million people who have received the first COVID vaccine doses. Uh, yesterday, I talked on my show that the day prior to that, it was the biggest day ever in terms of 1.25 million doses in one day, I believe. I imagine you're going to see this ramp up. Just remarkable, though. And again, you tie in what we have going on in the economy. You tie in a presidential impeachment for the second time. And then the market just sitting up here at 3,800, folks. I talk about it in my newsletter. If you want to check it out. Head on over to the TFNN webpage under newsletters. You'll see Rocket Equities and Options. One of the things I talk about, and, um, you know, folks, we do so much great programming at TFNN. We're so lucky to have the host we have. I'm honored to be filling in for Mr. Larry Pesavento this morning. He does such a great job kicking us off with the opening bell every morning. I love leading into his program every morning. Um, and just putting out information in terms of free information on our programs. One of the things that we talk about is, so... This is a market like we've never seen before, okay? So you try and wrap your head around. The market is always forward-looking. I agree with that statement. The forward-looking of our future is kind of unlike anything that I've at least never experienced in my lifetime and most, most people right now, like your lifetime as well, in that we have so much economic devastation right now, but we also have so much certainty of a bright future so close on the horizon, okay? So so the market is really at a quantum here 
quandary in terms of how can you possibly think about selling off when there is so much certainty of the vaccine as there should be. And I have you know, so much hope that in the next three to six months, it's going to be remarkable to see the acceleration and how the economy changes uh, as we open back up. It's remarkable that we're like actually getting there, right? We have 10 million doses of the vaccine now administered by January 12th, 13th of 2021. Point being, the market, you know, we all know consolidations. My general consensus, when you look at the market, and individual equities are, are gonna fly. Some are gonna accelerate higher, some are gonna accelerate lower because there's gonna be winners and losers for the next years, folks. All this did is exacerbate the technology change going on in terms of you know, Amazon skyrocketing higher. Um, if, you're, if you're reliant on malls to do business, you are in trouble, right? Doesn't mean that that landscape can't change a bit. Maybe they become entertainment complexes more than they become malls, but you're seeing a radical change. Now, point being again, I anticipate we're gonna see a little bit of a consolidation here for a period of time. Okay, we're sitting at 3,800. We were just at 3,200 to start November 1st. So we've, re- we've risen about 600 S&P points on the news of basically a vaccine and a new administration. The first run up had to do with the vaccine, okay? Whether it was gonna be President-elect Biden or it was gonna be Trump for another four years, the market finding out the efficacy of these vaccines to start November was a world-changing event. The market took note of that. We traded up 600 points, just generalizing, from 3,200 to 3,800, okay? That's approaching, what, an 18% pop or something like that. Well, the market traded 18% positive to end basically 2020 on the expectation that the vaccine's coming. Well, now reality needs to catch up with the rhetoric, okay? So that has to come to fruition. Will the market cascade lower? Who wants to be out of this market when you know that the news of declining cases, vaccines working, right? What happens when we get 50 million people vaccinated? What happens when we get the news that we get 100 million people vaccinated with their second dose? What happens when we get the news that we're dealing with no cases in many states and it's trickling off? That's coming, folks, okay? It's coming in the next three, six, nine months, okay? Now, we are going to be dealing with this potentially worldwide. We saw the news yesterday that you now need a negative case to travel internationally into the U.S. You're already seeing it play out, okay? There are going to be areas of the world that this is not eradicated from just yet, but that doesn't mean that the U.S. isn't going to get down to a level that's almost meaningless once we vaccinate our population, Point being, folks, we might see a consolidation to catch up to those numbers because it's already priced in. We know there's 95 percent of efficacy. We know that it's coming in three or six months. Doesn't mean we might just chop around a bit until that reality catches up with the S&P sitting at 3,800 from the lows of 2,100 in March. I mean, just remarkable. Something to think about, folks. It's something I think about in my newsletter. Options, a great way to make money in markets and stocks if you maybe expect a consolidation. Something to think about. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200 percent in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once in a generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. 
An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of Intel up here. How about 8.9%, folks? You put it on a 15-minute, giving back some of the gains, but quite an acceleration on the news that their CEO, as I talked about early in the program, stepping down in February. And, yeah, they're talking about over there in the YouTube Tiger's Den. Props to our man David White. He's been calling for it in a while, saying this thing is stuck. You might get a pop. Uh, when the CEO gets ousted, and sure enough, pop of about 9% right there on this morning's action so far on Intel shares. s and slipping a bit from the open, but we're off about two points. We spiked to a high right now of 3797. You're trading at about 3791 on the S&P futures. All right, what else we got going on? It is still earnings season. KB Homes out with their numbers last night. Quarterly earnings of 112 a share. The market was looking for 93 cents. Revenue also above forecast said housing market conditions continue to be robust. They expect meaningfully higher revenue and earnings this year. The market was up. Let's jump over to their chart, as you may expect. There's KB Holmes. How about 7.2% to the upside? We spiked to 3777. You put this on a daily. Now, what's remarkable here is that for how this market is doing, right? You got KB Homes sitting right at right where you where we were prior to COVID. Um, you saw rates fall through the floor. You've seen the housing market just just on fire, right? I don't need to tell you out there. If you're listening to this, if you're in the market, if you're watching Tiger TV, you're probably aware the housing market's been doing relatively well over the last year. Meanwhile, you have KB Homes. Yeah, we're up to 36.96. They could call it an underperformer with how everything's been going, sitting right at basically where we were on February 5th in that equity, but strong numbers last night, uh, up about 8% on KB. All right, what else we got Jumping around to the stories. So Regeneron, the U.S. government's going to buy additional doses of their antibody cocktail for $2.3 billion. Those doses are going to be delivered in the first half of the year. They're going to be used to treat high-risk, non-hospitalized hospitalized COVID patients. You got Regeneron trading a, high, a bit higher this morning. REGN is their symbol. Up 2.2%, but man, talk about a slide, right? From 664 down to about a price point of 470. We're getting a little bit of a pop, but be careful on this one, folks. That is quite a downtrend channel. Uh, you don't have to be an expert chartist to line up the lines potentially here where you're going. And you're talking about basically, you know, pretty close. Activate that drawing. There's your downtrend line, right? We do it again. Maybe you're looking at a downtrend channel somewhere around there. And nonetheless, we're right at the top end of that channel line. We'll see if Regeneron can break above. But be wary of that equity um, from 328 to 664. And we're back now. I mean, you almost give it all back. Look at this run when you put. I love just pulling up Fibonacci numbers, folks, to get a general idea what kind of pullbacks we're looking at. And, yeah, the moves have been pretty epic. But we just came down almost to a 618 retracement, folks, 456. And we were down to a price point of about 467 on Regeneron. 
This one, an interesting one about Disney. So I was looking at this. Disney, the Disney Plus service. Everybody knows I've been a pretty decent Disney bull out there. Uh, you're looking at 6% of consumer video streaming time in December. Okay, seems like a small number. It is a small number when you think about it, but Netflix dominated with 28% of streaming time. That's down from 31% in December 2019. I stress it because it seems like more people are at home with the ability to watch Netflix. Meanwhile, you have that number actually decreasing for Netflix, which you might not expect with the tendencies and the way that our, um, our own actions have been shaped by COVID. 3% drop in Netflix, you get Disney up at 6%. No real reaction on that news, but you see how that may shape things in the future. Disney shares over the last year, you're chopping, chopping right around this consolidation up here between about 170 to 180. You started the year at about 143. We'll back it up on a three-year weekly so you can see the highs that we were at, which was at about 153 in November prior to COVID. Now, you know, we're in Disney in the newsletter in an equity. We've also made some option trades. And, you know, when you think about why would you still be in this equity when you just traded from one, like over $100, right? You're at 79, you're at 183. Even where we were on November 2nd, you were trading at 120. You trade up 50% in two months, basically. But folks, just even from where we were in November, when you were trading at 153, you're barely up. What is that? So you're up $23. You could call it about 15%. Disney is up over where we were in November. They're dealing with a lot of pain in their parks. They're dealing with a lot of pain in their movie theaters. Okay, we saw Disneyland in California is going to be a max vaccination site because they're not even allowed to be open and do business in California right now. Disney World in Orlando is at a capacity. I have not been there myself. I know, you know, they're open, but they're not doing the type of business that they did prior to COVID. Point being, once the world returns to normal and I mean, their last earnings, folks, when you charged higher, this November earnings, Disney talked about that they're pushing potentially 350 million subscribers in 2024. Okay, that would have seemed um, crazy, to, to put it simply, in November when the stock was trading at 153. So here we are, basically a year and a quarter later, with Disney going to be pushing 350 million subscribers in 2024, and you're up about 15% from where you were. I mean, look, we based this whole year. Okay, we were, at, we were at 143 almost two years ago in Disney. So that's the argument for the upside. Uh, they got a long way to go, and that is the argument in the same way. They're only talking about 6% of streaming versus 28% of Netflix. Um, might be a different story there. Netflix has videos for every type of person, and they probably have 100 videos for every type of person. I think Netflix came out yesterday saying they're going to push out 70 major movies for this coming year, 7-0 which is just a, a huge undertaking, uh, I see some upside for Disney, even if they don't hit that 28%, because nobody's canceling Disney, folks. It's six, seven bucks a pop if you got your kids watching Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck every day, uh, which is a lot of households do. All right, jumping around to other equities out there with moves this morning. Neo, can't blame them, pushing out some, some paper at some high prices. They're offering $1.3 in convertible notes. The China-based electric vehicle maker plans to use the proceeds for general corporate purposes, strengthen its balance sheet. Neo shares have been quite a rocket ship, and they're saying, you know what? what when, do you, when do you get credit, folks? You go get credit when times are good. You do not go for credit when times are bad. All right, we got Neo up about 3% on that news. It was interesting you saw yesterday uh, that we had Zoom. Right. Pushing out the same way. One point five billion dollars in a secondary offering. A little bit different. That one's a secondary offering. Uh, spikes to three eighteen. The market says, hey, guess what? We love this because now we got one point five billion dollars extra and we trade to three fifty five. You're seeing a little volatility this morning on on Zoom. You back this up to keep things in context here. This is an area, folks. You're looking for Zoom. You're a long term investor. Put that on your radar. Uh, can't go wrong with maybe a little bit of a partial position even because we filled this entire gap the high here for that gap going back to august 31st was about 325 you traded to 318 pre-market yesterday to fill that gap pretty cool when the stocks do that one of the other companies i look at and keep an eye on in the newsletter well that one's got the 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 subscriber info so i'm not going to check that out if you want the info for salesforce folks 
Come on over to TFNN. Subscribe for Rocket Equities and Options. We got some trades going on in there. But pull up Salesforce yourself. I'll check it out after the break. That also, filling a gap left. You fill that gap, strong company. Check out those companies, something to keep your, your eye on. Gold contract, 1858. Gold is kind of basing around here for a while. We'll see where gold goes. Quite the pullback recently, but we got some strength down here. It might be just a little bit of a consolidation in gold. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up what else we have going on in the program. Stay tuned. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was run in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart here of Delta Airlines. Delta down about 1.2% today. So speaking of earnings, we got Delta tomorrow morning before the opening bell. They'll be out with their numbers, and man, so they're looking for a 67.9% drop in revenue. That's a 70% drop in revenue on most folks to $3.68 billion. Remarkable when you think about that. They could be taking in $3.68 billion still. Uh, they'll be out with their numbers tomorrow before the opening bell, and then Friday, we kick things off with the banks. You got JP Morgan. They'll be out along with, uh, who else? We got Citigroup. PNC Financial Services and Wells Fargo all on Friday. And then next week, we really kick things off in a big way. Uh, this market, just hanging out. We got the S&Ps flat at 37.93 right now, kind of right in the middle of the range we had yesterday. Pretty interesting when you think about S&Ps, right? We saw the thrust downward middle of the day yesterday. We saw that thrust downward pre-market. 
this morning down to almost 37.75. We're sitting basically flat right now in the S&P market. Jumping over to notes and bonds continuing to rise a bit. When you talk about the yields, we're talking about a yield right now in the tenure of 1.1%. That was as high as about 1.17%. Man, you put this thing on a daily, quite a decisive break to lower price and higher yield in that 10-year bond market. We'll jump over to the volatility index on a daily basis. You see, we're kind of chopping around in the low 20s. That's as comfortable as the VIX has ever been since COVID came about. I mean, look at, look at that jump from February 21st. Okay, you had a high of 1821. We haven't seen that number since. And we opened on February 24th when things really started to heat up to the downside. And it didn't take long for the VIX to hit 85. We've gotten a few spikes since then, but nonetheless, 23. And I bring it up because think about folks, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of volatility priced into this market sometimes because of where we've been, because of the complacency at all time highs. But if you're in the options market, to have a VIX sitting at 23, all that premium priced into these equities, we have a lot of uncertainty coming into earnings season, which even increases the expected moves even further for some of these equities. And meanwhile, we have an S&P sitting basically, when you put it on a daily, all time highs, folks, at 37.92 right now. All right, folks, I appreciate you tuning in. Stay tuned. I'll be coming back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Larry's going to be back in the saddle tomorrow. Fast market at 11 o'clock. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, all this afternoon. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Have a great one.